when I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me. Hi, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to hell. And as per usual, before we launch in, today's video is sponsored by Established Titles, which you'd better watch because I tried really hard. <laughs> Now, the other day, I was researching for another topic, another video that is still on the way. Do not worry, those of you who think I am not making long-form content anymore. I am. And during my adventure on the internet, I came across an article about She-Hulk, and a particular part of this article set my blood on fire. It explains that while Marvel films lack humanistic character traits such as sex, despite Iron Man being a womanizing millionaire and Thor being a god surrounded by a sea of women, these male superheroes don't pay these ladies any mind because the world is in danger and that is, understandably, more important. However, the primary She-Hulk writer wants to change that narrative. This isn't all just about boys and their need to feel worthy. Now, Jennifer Walters, at She-Hulk, has arrived and she wants nothing to do with saving the world. She's ready to be honest about her life with her newfound powers, juggling her career and her dating life. Is there anything more depressing than dating in your 30s? What else are you gonna do as a Hulk? Uh, return to my career that I have spent years building. What the fuck? So the male superheroes don't have any time for women because they're busy saving the world. But the female superhero is not interested in saving the world and is instead interested only in her career and dating life. Do you see? Do you see the problem? You could be an Avenger. Oh, I'm not a superhero. That is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans. Who still save the world. Unlike you, my friend. It's like writers want people to hate female leads. Whether you've seen it or not, you're probably all aware at this stage that She-Hulk is yet another bizarre attempt to shove corporate feminism down everybody's throats. Despite what feminist Hollywood might have you believe, these films, shows, and franchises are not appealing to men, but they're also not appealing to women. Seriously, I don't know a single woman who actually enjoys this. Except maybe the bitter ones with like 15 cats. Who's to say? Um, I don't own a single cat and I enjoy it. Yet. Don't have any cats. Yet. So that's what I want to talk about today. Why feminist Hollywood movies are uniquely terrible, why they don't appeal to anyone, especially women, and all the components that go into making them so deeply unwatchable. But before you once again board my hell gondola and we snuggle up together to watch some Marvel movie punishment, let's hear from today's sponsor, Established Titles. Did you see this? See what? This article. It says that they cut down like millions of trees in Scotland to make room for windmills. I hate windmills. Wind turbines. Whatever. Same thing. There comes a point in every person's life where they have to pay homage to Scotland and their Scottish roots. You still don't have Scottish roots. Where they must go to establish titles to become a lord or lady get their own fancy certificate, and a square foot of land on a private Scottish estate. What is happening? But more importantly, because established titles promises to plant a tree for every order placed. Because we can I let the English windmills turbine. Win. It doesn't matter that you can call yourself a laird or lady on your plane tickets, your dating profiles, and your credit cards. It matters that we lords and ladies will save the trees for Scotland and for freedom! You guys know the drill. I defiled my face for you. Head over to established titles or click the link in the description to take advantage of their awesome Labor Day sale. The next 200 people to use my link to buy a title pack will effectively have their plot of land next to my plot of land. Like a little kingdom. And don't forget to use code SYDNEY for 10% off your entire purchase. 
If we take a trip back to the 80s and 90s, I think that it is fair to argue this was a great time for film and entertainment. Storylines feel authentic, the characters are memorable, and the writing is still so quotable today. And most importantly, writers weren't focused on forced diversity or writing films with the sole purpose of pushing wokeism and other social narratives. Good films did well, we didn't pathologize when they didn't, and during this time period, plenty of great films and shows with female leads captured people's attention. Terminator with Sarah Connor, Ellen Ripley in Aliens, Princess Leia in Star Wars. There are tons of these, tons of these examples, some of which you won't agree with, but I personally enjoy Lilu from The Fifth Element because, I don't know, I like that she's feminine and emotional while also being like this weird light creature who will save the planet. And let's be real, we all collectively enjoyed her bandage outfit. You aren't lying to me. You're lying to yourself. But these female leads are a far cry from what feminist Hollywood is giving us today. In an effort to place women in what have been long considered male roles, feminist Hollywood overcorrected, giving us a series of unlikable, unrelatable, unrealistic, strong female leads. I need you to fix his suit. The suit is literal perfection. It will be. When it fits a woman. <laughs> it's a no. That's gonna be a no from me. Okay, thank you for your input, Walmart Robin. The trouble is, they've done this over and over and over and have clearly learned nothing. The box office doesn't lie even if Screen Rant does. Now, the most obvious starting point for this entire discussion is that these modern feminist films fail because of sexism. One article I found thinks that Captain Marvel was criticized because men are man babies who don't want to see a woman headlining a Marvel movie. In reality, Brie Larson is just like super unlikable on and off screen. And if the objective was to embody an effortlessly badass woman that men love and women want to be, well, that wasn't achieved whatsoever. I have nothing to prove to you. I See, do all my stunts. Thing. I did. I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Tom, Tom Cruise over here? No, I'll be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank you very much. Wow. For the record, this is Tom Cruise doing his own stunts. What leftists and feminists often attribute to sexism could be more accurately summarized by the fact that film and TV today just isn't really all that good, and having female leads doesn't change that. If anything, with the way most of them are written, it makes it worse. And there are a few reasons for this. For starters, most of these characters are female for the sake of it. When they're gender swapped in well-known series and franchises, the truth is there isn't any actual need for them. Think Star Wars or the female Doctor Who. You see, I care so little about these female leads, I can't even remember their names. Girl with shiny light stick who has a disappointing romance arc. Blonde female character absolutely no one asked for. On a serious note, you guys do not understand how much I hated Rey in Star Wars. I watched it the whole time thinking, I don't mind if they kill the main character this time. I don't mind. I'll, I'll, I will, I will do it. I will, I will, I, me, I, I volunteer as tribute. And because these female characters are often shoved into a movie or a show for no good reason, it means that they aren't fully fledged people with their own pain, struggles, and flaws. They are there for the express purpose of propagating a feminist message. And when they do for some reason have a struggle, it's as one dimensional and flat as this. Well, here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me, I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk because he has inner turmoil that he sometimes can't control. I read that some changes to his backstory have added that he was abused as a child, and that he and Hulk are two separate personas struggling for control of the body. 
When I had the gauntlet, the stones, I, I really tried to bring her back. The point is, unlike She-Hulk, Banner is not dealing with some trivial nonsense where someone calls out to him in the street to say he looks nice. And I have to admit, even while I was collecting and watching clips to edit together this video, the way that Banner is portrayed on screen, especially his relationship with Black Widow, the way that she calms him down and so on, it even was starting to get me in the feels. She-Hulk elicits none of that. When I watch her, rather than finding her humorous, which I don't know, maybe that's that maybe that's what she's supposed to be. I just find her annoying and weak. Which is ironic considering she's supposed to be a strong female character. Your transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. Given that I am a woman, I do feel a little qualified to say that I am acutely aware of the unique struggles that women have. However, articulating them like this is just so... The female protagonists of old, including those who were featured in older films that have now been remade and destroyed, were women who embodied actual feminine and female characteristics and traits. But the difference is that those traits didn't stop them from being badasses. And they aren't female for the sake of a female character. They are well-written, thoughtful representations of a character who just happens to be female. Take Sarah Connor for example. In Terminator 2 she is hell-bent on killing Mike Dyson, a man she doesn't know, for something he doesn't know will have terrible consequences. When she finally has the chance and sees his son trying to protect him, she breaks down. Her own son shows up and they share a moment. Our badass leading lady suddenly becomes a human and a mother. It is no different at the end of The Fifth Element when Lilu knows the Earth is about to be exploded. Her very purpose is to save life and she can't fulfill that purpose because she can't see why humanity is worth saving if all it does is kill and destroy. That and, you know, she got like shot at and then beaten up and she's, she's bleeding, it's all very sad. The scene where Bruce Willis is holding her and she's crying tells us how big a burden this is for her. Today's female characters are flat and empty and impossible to relate to. They have no flaws, they immediately succeed at everything they do, and they have no journey of personal growth and development. We see this when She-Hulk beats Banner repeatedly during training together. We see this when Rey in Star Wars immediately masters things that took Luke forever to learn, like, stop this. Mulan is a gifted fighter from day one, which is 100% the opposite of what she is in the animation. And apparently Captain Marvel is the strongest of all the superheroes. Because, okay, I believe you. I think I'm jealous. Is that what I'm feeling? To cap it off, so many of these women are either full of unnecessary, unkind, catty lines and whining, or they're in a pick man pickle measuring. <laughs> Or they're in a man pickle measuring contest with the men around them. Some of you might disagree with me here, but one of the reasons I loved Wonder Woman was because she embodied a femininity often lost on female superheroes. She trained for years to hone her skills, to earn her skills, and when these skills failed her and a loved one dies, her pain is so obviously crushing. It makes her relatable, and when she finally triumphs, we celebrate along with her. That and, you know, the movie made me walk out of the cinema wanting to become a ninja. I'm also talking about the 2017 Wonder Woman movie and not the weird garbage that came after. The point is, a well-rounded character, regardless of sex, makes a film worth watching. But throwing a woman in there just for the sake of it isn't a good enough reason for me to care. Especially when their entire personality is built around, I don't know, like fighting the patriarchy or something. And this brings us to the point that modern feminist characters are not people. They serve as vessels for feminist propaganda and man-hating. I think it's more or less true that when writers focus more attention on the sex, skin color, or sexual orientation of a character, rather than making that character into a multifaceted individual, it's ultimately unwatchable. Batwoman, which was cancelled after three seasons, stank to high heaven of identity politics. It started off with endlessly snarky comments and evolved from there. An article from earlier this year wrote that it was groundbreaking to have a black bisexual actress become Batwoman, but even this article notes that the casting choice didn't do much to mitigate the narrative problems of the show. Because Newsflash, being gay and female, doesn't change terrible writing. 
Sorry about that. While we have no idea why Batgirl was cancelled before it even aired, something tells me it probably had something to do with the same identity politics that killed off so many of its predecessors. Overall, writers who don't properly flesh out a character do that character zero favours. Worse still are the female characters who are forced to compete with their male counterparts or who are made superior to them even if it doesn't make any sense. People came down pretty hard on Thor Love and Thunder, which features Natalie Portman as the female Thor, or Jane, because it didn't make Jane's character look awesome, it just made Thor's character look like an imbecile. As some of you may have noticed, this is actually a very common theme in modern television and film. Men are often portrayed as weak, silly, and misogynistic. Just make sure to put the eggs on top. So I shouldn't open up the carton and just dump them all in there? Okay. I'm gonna go wait in the car. Let's try now. Yeah, I know how to pack my own suitcase, I can pack my own grocery bag. Let's also remember that men make up a huge portion of audiences when it comes to watching particularly superhero movies, and all this does is alienate that base. These films go out of their way to make men look bad, and it's different to simply portraying men as the villain. In addition to that, men can never seem to be of any help to the women they fight or work alongside. I personally hate this because it makes it a matter of male versus female rather than how can we solve this problem together. I mean, it also leads to weird situations where we are forced to suspend our disbelief to watch some tiny woman beat the snot out of a man twice her size. Because again, yeah, I believe you can throw around this man, lesbian Bella. One thing I also think is worth noting is that every good female character I've listed so far has emotions and has emotional motivations for doing the things that they do. Unfortunately, today's female leads have these feelings and emotions written out of them, and if they do, for whatever reason, have a feeling, it's often totally ridiculous and over the top. I don't think that Captain Marvel experiences a single feeling while on screen, even when she's alone and supposed to be reflective. Sorry, Brie, this isn't an emotional face. Try harder. Can you keep your emotions in check long enough to take me on? Just kidding. She doesn't have any. On the flip side, you have She-Hulk flipping out at men outside a bar for being weirdos because she's sick of men. I don't know, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to get from this. If rendering female characters emotionless robot people is supposed to make them appear stronger and push against this idea that women are more emotional than men, it's an abject failure. A strong woman knows when to be emotional and when to put her feelings aside. It isn't some sad reflection of women that we experience emotions, and it shouldn't be forcibly removed from these female personalities in order for them to achieve something worthwhile. And you know, if they wanted to have She-Hulk losing her absolute chops at some men, it would have made a lot more sense if she wasn't presented to us as a character who consistently gets her way. Until this point, it's not like we've seen her having setback after setback and getting angrier and angrier, so this moment makes absolutely no sense. Not that anything she does makes sense. Taking all the traits that are often seen in villainous male characters and just shoving them onto female characters doesn't suddenly mean we're going to like them. I think the fact of the matter is that showrunners and writers contribute sexism to their own characters by writing them poorly, and no amount of shaming from directors and writers is going to change that. My real plea is for men to have enough empathy to go see movies starring women. Stop this! Obviously, there are a couple points that I left out of this video in the interest of not having it be a thousand years long. But in summary, good female protagonists are not one-dimensional. They aren't simply there to parrot liberal feminist talking points. They serve a higher purpose and often have deep-rooted motivations for what they do. They don't compete with their male counterparts, rather they acknowledge the strengths of the men around them, even sometimes acquiescing to them when necessary and needed. I am a woman who really does enjoy female leads, not because I can relate to them 100% of the time, but because I like going on a journey with them that leads them to be stronger and more resilient, or going in the opposite direction where they're a little more hardened and learn to be softer and to love, and so forth. I don't need to be bludgeoned to death with a feminist message to watch these movies, 
but I also don't want to be subjected to ridiculous feminist propaganda that has no place in modern society, watching female characters stand up at the expense of their male counterparts. In the end, wokeism has become a shield for bad television and film. Sexism has become the justification when a female-led film doesn't do well, as if male-led films don't fail all the time. And these justifications fall flat when you consider just how little effort is put into these female-led films and the female characters who lead them. Feminist Hollywood sucks, and I'm fairly certain that they have absolutely nobody to blame but themselves. Now before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder to check out established titles using the link in the description. When you do and you use code SYDNEY, you'll get 10% off any purchase. Now open the floor to all of you, what do you all think? Is this as annoying as I think it is? Do you like female characters? Do you dislike female characters? Does it put you off watching a movie if it has a female lead? What do you make of gender swapping? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it unnecessary? Is it very necessary? What do you think of She-Hulk and the blow up around She-Hulk or the opinions around She-Hulk? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you wanna leave a comment, feel free to do so, just be respectful about it, and I will see you guys next time.